This video will cover the foundations of life in biology. So let's define biology. The biology is the study of living things like plants and animals. We classify living things by seven characteristics. Their cellular organization, ordered of complexity, and homostasis are the first three. Cellular organization meaning that all living things has at least one cell, which I may tell you, cells are the basic units of life, and we usually have more than enough to see, too many to see. You can't see them and they're really, really small. And they're ordered in a very complex manner. There are other organisms that are ordered and have, you know, molecular um, structures, however, none as complex as living organisms. Homeostasis just means that when it's 100 degrees outside, your, ba your body is able to maintain a cool temperature and will not overheat based on its outside environment. Then we have energy utilization, sensitivity, growth, development, and reproduction, and evolutionary adaptations. So what that means is that all living things has to get their energy from something in order to survive or to live or to function. For instance, plants need to get their energy for the sun so they can continue to function. We, get, we being humans and other animals, get our energy from our diet, okay? Without food, we will not be able to function. Our brain won't function, our organs won't function. We need that energy to function. Sensitivity. All living organisms respond to stimuli like sound and light. Um, you hear a, a car horn honk, you look in the direction. Someone calls your name, you look in the direction. Someone turns the light on, your pupils dilate to get the light in. These are things that living organisms respond to, whereas rocks who are not living, they don't really respond to any stimuli. Growth, development, and reproduction. All living organisms are able to pass down hereditary genes from one generation to another. For instance, rocks don't reproduce. However, plants do in the form of seeds. They make more seeds. They, you know, they, we, they spray their seeds. They make more. Humans and animals also, too, reproduce. And we grow. We don't always stay as babies. When you come out your, your mother's womb, you grow in different stages and phases. Um, and then as you grow, your body develops, so do your organs, okay? Evolutionary adaptations. Um, I like to think of this as when the ancestors first started out in the Paleolithic age, they didn't have as much advanced technology as they did now. We now wear different clothes to adapt to our changing weather environments. Our homes have changed um, just everything around us have changed and we've changed this to adapt to our surroundings, our interactions with other organisms for our survival. So let's talk about the inside of a living organism, the cellular level. Like I said before, it starts with atoms. Atoms start first, then molecules, then micromolecules, then organelles, and then finally a cell. Without a cell, you do not have a living organism. Okay, so an atom is a central element of matter, a molecule. Basically, it's just multiple atoms put together. Organelles are micromolecules lumped together to form tiny structures, and then finally you get a cell. M membrane bonded units. Okay. I've given you examples of what this looks like. So here's an atom, and then here's a molecule. There's a micromolecule, an organelle, and of course a cell. That's what it looks like. Then we have the organism level, okay? So you have your tissue, your organ, your organ system, and your, then your organism. So tissue like your muscles, then you have organs like your heart, and then you have organ systems like your digestive system, and then you have organisms like humans, zebras, cats, dogs, okay? So a tissue is cells that come together and act as a, as a unit. And then your organs are a group of tissues that act as one unit. And then your organ system is a group of organs that work together to perform a specific task. And then from all of those, you get your organism like humans and animals that are single cell life forms. And here are another examples of tissue and organs. I have a picture of a heart here and then in your tissue I have four different types here. And we'll discuss more of those types of tissues as we go further into biology. 
And then I have here your digestive system as our organ system, and then I have a zebra as our organism. The last level we have is the populational level, where you have a population, a species, a community, an ecosystem, and a biosphere. Your population is just more than one zebra, the organism we used in the previous example. A species is a lot of populations of one kind of organism. So like the human, human race, we are a species. There are black humans, white humans, Asian humans, Indian humans. There are different types of humans and we all have our own population, but together we make a species. Then you have a community, which is a various type of species populations coexisting in one place, kind of like your neighborhood. Like in my neighborhood, there are various types of humans and dogs and cats and birds and fish, okay? These are all different types of species populations coexisting together. Well, in an ecosystem, it's kind of like a community on a step it takes it a step further. It's the biological community of interacting organisms. So here we would have where my ecosystem is in a city, where in the city we have dogs and cats, humans, some places have coyotes, in my area, we have rabbits. And then we have water and rocks and lakes and parks. These are all these things we interact with in the ecosystem, living and non-living, okay, interaction. That's what makes up the ecosystem. Then you have the biosphere, which is really the surface of the planet and everything that's living in every single thing that's living and non-living, interacting with each other on the surface of the earth, okay? That is all for this video. I will see you next video.